Hello, and welcome to Collision's YYC, Follow the Money, Investing with Purpose, a show where we have real conversations with the people who are driving change in our community. No one better to fit under that under that billing than Miss Sandy Gilbert. How you doing, Sandy? I'm great, Tyler. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. Thanks so much for coming on. You and I were joking that uh, you're out and about and I see you everywhere, but you made the point that I also am out and about and see you everywhere. So I do love Calgary, biggest small town ever. And uh, you and I chatted, um, well, I think we went live in April, 2022. So we probably chatted earlier. So it was time to circle back. So for anyone who doesn't know, you're the CEO at Intergen. You're the founder and CEO at DealPoint Capital. So give us the quick elevator, whichever, however you want to, you want it to go DealPoint and then Intergen. Give us a little bit about who you are, the world you live in. And then let's have a conversation about uh, the investment ecosystem here in Calgary and Alberta. Right on, uh, Tyler. So, you know, really I'm best described just as somebody that really Uh, is passionate about ensuring that uh, entrepreneurs have the capital and the resources they need to build their businesses. So I'm really deep in that ecosystem. Um, On the Intergen forefront, we have uh, a fantastic matching platform. We call it the dating app that allows for individuals who have had success and want to give back and support the next generation entrepreneur to build a profile and say, this is who I am, my experience and how I can help. And just like a dating app on the other side, a founder uh, builds a profile that says, this is the stage of company I'm in. Uh, This is the help I need. And miraculously, they get matched. So it's been really fun to see that that evolve. We now have over 500 uh, individuals that have expressed an interest in helping and over 500 companies that need help. So how about that? That's pretty good. Oh, that's, I was good. Cause it is about all the, it's about the, the balance, right? When you build that ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, and it's interesting, nice. even when you look at the experience and what people are looking for, it's pretty balanced. So our network isn't um, tech entrepreneurs, Tyler. Our network is business leaders that have built and scaled large companies. So the help that we are really good at, uh, at Intergen for our founders and our entrepreneurs is really around how you build your business, how you scale your business, the foundation of business, how to do cross-border deals, how to write contracts, how to bring HR uh, into your uh, world as you're starting to scale and grow uh, your team. So that's the type of experience that we have. And then really another thing that that our uh, entrepreneurs really love about us is just the fact that we can give you a connection to a customer. And so if you need to get into you know, NMAX, I always say, or ATB or whomever, we probably know someone that can help you uh, get in that door. We can't close it for you, but you can certainly get in and, uh, and uh, it's up to you once you get there. That seems like a very, that seems very Calgary and I'm our our Western Canada. Like that seems so like right on brand for who I think we, the city is right there or this province. I don't want to limit to the city. I mean, it's so crazy, Tyler. We had a big strategy session yesterday and that's what kept coming up all the time (laughs) is like, this is just so Calgary, right? I don't know that you could actually do this anywhere else. Um, but it's really well, been, the, the, the walls um, are higher and the gates are locked with more locks yeah, in, other, sure. in other parts of yeah. I've grew up in central Canada. And if you're on the in, you're good. But if you're on the out, whew, yeah. climbing that wall is a real thing, right? Yeah. For, for sure. Alberta, an introduction, uh, if you can demonstrate value and someone will go, Oh, well, I, I don't, I can't benefit, but you know who I'm going to introduce you to someone yeah, and they'll actually true. do it. Yeah. They'll actually do it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's hard to convince entrepreneurs of that. I always say, just ask, mm-hmm. you've just got to ask. Right. So That's great. And then, of course, we have a venture fund alongside that, Tyler, that we have invested in 11 great Calgary companies. Um, We're excited about the prospects around the success of those companies. Companies you would know like Zazun and Athenian and Stellarago and Virtuo and Orpex. I could name them all, but um, we are excited about our role in supporting them to really get kind of capital post-seed capital so that capital they need to get to institutional Series A money, that's where we can help. And Calgarians step up all the time at that stage and uh, support these companies um, to get to a scale. So that's- I love what um, you said. You said names that you would know. A few years ago, I wouldn't have known and maybe the community wouldn't have known either. So we're getting some stories that are getting farther down the journey, which, you know, Zezu being one, Cement being one, like I can name them off. A few years ago- also, I was on the outside. Part of why I did this was I want the best way to learn is just get in and have conversations. It is in, in Calgary. Everyone's willing to to do that. But these are we're getting some far. We're getting closer to. I wouldn't say exits, but it's starting to create a bigger churn. Like the the pool's getting bigger, the ecosystem is growing, and nothing like some fresh capital getting exposed to new opportunities 
to really kind of spin that flywheel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's been really interesting to see the growth in the ecosystem. You know, since kind of the 2015, 16, things have mm-hmm. changed a lot, and but that just shows how long it takes to build that foundational. Um, platform for <laughs> the, the, the 10 year, the 10 or 20 year overnight success. We're gonna, is that 10 year overnight success? Exactly. Oh my God. I can't believe you guys are so successfully like, uh-huh, I used to live <laughs> in my car. Okay. Just like, <laughs> let's, I've heard those stories before. Okay. Something I want to check in with you on back. I was thinking about our conversation and something that resonated with me. And I asked the question around, okay, we've got an energy sector now that is maybe coming back. It's come back. That's probably more positive than it's ever been. I've had enough people on from that sector. But even when you and I chatted a year and a half ago, it was still just starting that journey. And I had the question about what about money that's really comfortable in that space, making its way into this space. And I say this versus that traditional energy into more technology. And you made the comment, you said, yeah, there's going to be some, but there's a lot of people that have been holding on since 2013, 14 to get some of that money off the table. Uh, We'll see what happens. What, any thoughts on that? Or I might've paraphrased the heck out of that, but any thoughts on where you're seeing that now, even versus a couple of years ago? Yeah, so it's a big conversation in uh, the city and, and frankly, globally about Mm. some of the wealth uh, that has invested traditionally and conservatively a lot to um, maintain, you know, family foundations and, you know, future generational wealth. Um, Will it get off the, um, off the, off the, off the sidelines and actually uh, hit this sector? So, I would say, Tyler, we're making very good progress. So, okay. you know, the Intergen Fund itself is all kind of traditional uh, investors that hadn't uh, participated in the space earlier. They're now seeing the success and the impact that their investment is making in the community, not only from the potential returns that we intend to yep. provide, but just the impact of seeing a company go from seven employees to a hundred employees and million in revenue to 25 million in revenue. So that starts to be real to them, right? We often say that, you know, lots of people that are outside of the tech scene kind of think that it's two guys in a garage building an app. (laughs) And what it really is, is- Well, media is going to do a job of portraying it as that, right? To make it feel like that. (laughs) It's really, it's technology enabled businesses. That's really what it is. Tech isn't a thing. It's just, uh, it it isn't a company. It is something that helps companies um, grow faster, stronger, higher, capture more market share and disrupt uh, traditional industry. So although I don't think we're there, I think that we're starting to see that. One of our LPs recently uh, gave a a speech at a family office um, finance conference talking about why she, with her private wealth um, assets, is, is moving some of it into more alternative securities, which of course our asset class would be considered. Yeah. And people are starting to step up. I once at, at this session, Tyler, there was an investor, a re- real estate investor from Vancouver that had invested in Vancouver in real estate for the last 30 years. And he's totally out of real estate, totally into tech. Like it was just crazy to hear him. But, but so, those are inspiring stories because if you can see it, you can, oh, hmm, yeah, it, shows, yeah. it shows what's possible, right? So <laughs> I do think that because you hmm. said, Tyler, we didn't hear of Zazun, we didn't know of Athenian, we didn't know of Benevity, and now those names are starting to um, be um, recognizable by people outside of our sector, um, that's a very positive thing as well. Interesting. So it we're on the journey. It's really we're on the and journey. And, and it's hard to shortcut that journey. Has a little, you know, I was chatting with, uh, I had, I had, I had a conversation with Mark Blackbell earlier this week about, you know, what kind of his perspective and what they're doing. And he said, you know, there's going to be some very traditional, his thought, because we talked about some of the re, um, readjustments and valuations that's happened in the last year, which is maybe also a good thing for overall success and getting companies back to a real profitability m- mindset versus growth at all costs. And, and maybe some things were overvalued. He said, you know, my thought is that there's going to be some traditional funds that go, oh, wow, this didn't work out like we thought. But he also felt that most of these groups are long horizons. They get it. What's your thought on just this correction that we've gone through? And it's just a broad way to say it. Uh, yeah, things I in mean, 2021 maybe don't look the same now. And how's that had an impact for someone who's like, well, I got into this and I'm already taking a beating. What's going on here? Yeah, I think um, I think it, Calgary and Alberta has, <laughs> has been a little isolated from some of the um, mm. carnage, let's call it, that may be <laughs> happening. Good, word, there. good word. Good <laughs> word. Um, So, I mean, things got a little crazy in 2021, 2022, um, with people just kind of throwing money and 
burning money and it was like spend money at all costs, add users. Is there a business model? We're not sure yet. So and we are really so funny. Seeing, I think we've seen this story many, many times. I think we have. <laughs> Whether it's, no matter what the sector is, we're 100%. Sure. And what geography you want to pick on. Yeah. As, as but we, I think as, that, as we see, um, we, we work fading off into the distance. Not, totally. Not that long ago, I, right? You know, oh, I, let's, we could name them all, Tyler. There's yeah, 100%, many of them yeah, totally. to name. <laughs> um, but foundational businesses that have really built a business that have customers that, that um, see the value of the product or service they're bringing to the market will do well. Um, we have seen in, in Calgary um, some downsizing of some companies because they've decided to focus on revenue, um, not on, well, let's see what this product might do for us in the future. So there's been some right sizing of that business to concentrate on capturing revenue. One of the founders in our portfolio, you know, I chatted with uh, him recently and we were talking about building the infrastructure operationally to scale or revenue. And he said, Revenue, 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 revenue. You can solve a lot of things operationally if you have smart people there doing it, but capture the revenue. And that's really where we're seeing a lot of people focus on. Frankly, I'm that kind doesn't of sound like a bad thing at all, Sandy. Revenue. That's not a bad thing. Exactly. <laughs> bad thing. I'd much rather celebrate someone doing $20 million in revenue than raising $20 million of equity, right? Yes, getting caught on where we where, where we hang the target, right? If yeah. you hang it in front of the window, you might just shoot the window out and wonder why the window keeps breaking. <laughs> um, so my second follow up, my two follow ups was you know for I think it was one of the quote of the pull quotes we did when we recorded your episode of like for entrepreneurs as well as career individuals to come to Calgary or to, in, to, to engage in this space, they've got to see a way forward. They've got to see beyond the next job or maybe beyond the, well, geez, if we invest now, who's going to be there to take us out or who's going to be the next round? Are we seeing that just through that maturity cycle that's happening that there's maybe, I, I heard there's 150,000 tech jobs in Alberta right now. And I'm hearing numbers where it's starting to get like, oh, you mean if I move here from some other part of the world, if I bring my money here, there's a path forward. Are you also seeing that evolve? Well, that is the maturing of the um, of the space for sure. Um, you know, I was talking to the chamber the other day and uh, just chatting about the, you know, we're hearing that people are laying people off. And I went, listen, here's the deal. That's good for the company because they've um, focused on what they need to focus on. But it also means that there's um, good talent available on the street and they're going to get hired because we need the talent. So. Yeah. It is starting to be a, be a bit of a flywheel that, you know, you can get to um, a company that's scaling. Maybe you're, an, you're a, a team member that really likes that early stage. And now you've got there. Now you can go back and go to early stage. So, yes, you're not coming for a job and not going to get another one anymore here. And I think that's really exciting for the space as well. Um, we have Just a, up the, a un- the unemployment back- rate. The unemployment rate in Alberta is 5.8%. I was curious because, you know, sometimes we talk about that. You hear it in the news all the time. I just haven't heard it for a while, or maybe it's just not on my radar. I know. Um, and I know, and there's so much to even understand what that number means. So I'm sorry. The internet is too conveniently right on my other screen here. <laughs> Let's just regard that. Please continue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we've, we've got, we've seen people moving back from Vancouver. We've seen people moving back from Toronto. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got a cost of living thing here that's working in our favor for now. Yeah. Um, so, and it's, and it's awesome here to saying, it's and it's really awesome bold here. About that. <laughs> even when I there's was, a little bit of snow on the ground this morning, I know as you and I were joking here. this morning, but get his, but if we got blue skies, there's not a cloud, the sky today, I was meeting with one of our clients just who's a large, uh, single multifamily home builder in, in Alberta. They're flat out. The restriction they said is not, is not demand it's supply. Can we get enough can people? Can we get enough people to actually build? Can we get enough mirrors? <laughs> can we get enough toilets? Which I know is getting better than it was the, uh, they talked about, you know, making a run to Ikea because they had to get all the mirrors because they couldn't deliver homes without them. And he said, that's kind of normalized, but it's not a supply. It's not a demand problem from a net new migration. And probably 40, 50% of their marketing qualified leads are coming from Ontario and, and BC. Yeah. And that's just crazy. like, those are the facts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just can't keep up with uh, building homes. There's no doubt about that. Mm, fabulous. So what do you see getting back to what? Okay. So what can we talk about today that I'm going to follow up with you a year and a half from now on? So we'll set that t- table. Hey. What, what, where, what things are really, um, you know, we talked about a little bit, uh, some of the, we'll call it a resetting, <laughs> uses the word carnage in some markets, but there's been a bit of a reset. Maybe we're hitting more of our pace. What are you seeing is like, gets you really excited and where are we still getting in our way? Like, I still want to have those conversations as well. Well, first of all, Tyler, I'm not an economist. So, um, you know, we just... I'll let you off the hook on that. <laughs> exactly. Because, you know, I might be wrong if I was. No, I didn't mean that actually. But um, 
What am I seeing? Wow. Good question, Tyler. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think that, um, I'm very bullish on Alberta, obviously, but I'm a bullish on Alberta person. Uh, yeah, you, you, you and I are on that train together. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think all of, uh, you know, we're really starting to get, um, into a groove of how we can support entrepreneurs from very early stage to later stage. Our professional services teams are better now. Our lawyers and our accountants are um, better and used to now dealing in, um, you know, financings around tech. Um, you know, I think that we've just really grown up. Um, I worry a little bit, Tyler, in all honesty, about the noise out there. You and I just said we we run into each other everywhere. And I'm worried a little bit that we're speaking to ourselves too much. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. The ecosystem can become an echo chamber, right? <laughs> yes. We need okay. to get the information out to everyone else. And at Intergen, I'm focused on that every day. I'm trying to bring somebody new into the room, somebody that hasn't seen the success of our uh, entrepreneurs, to understand how exciting it is to talk to these entrepreneurs that are building fantastic products and services that are going to change and make a big impact on uh, our uh, civilization. Really, how, so, how we live our, how we live every day. With yeah, five hundred uh, with the five hundred mentors that are in the Intergen platform. Are they all Western Canada, or, or is that dispersed? Just thinking about that is such a great pool to get more people exposed. Yeah, it is. They're all here. They're mostly okay. Calgary, which gets um, me excited, but doesn't doesn't answer your echo chamber challenge, right? Yeah, <laughs> although way. our but our advisors are not from the space. Yeah, so they they're outside of the tech. They're they're coming in to learn. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you come to an Intergen event, you're going to see you know uh, senior business leaders of names of people that you know down to the right. uh, a young entrepreneur that's you know just scaling their business. So it's a very diverse group. Um, but I still I feel that. that we are we are um, we're patting ourselves on the back along a lot of the times and saying, aren't we just the greatest? But we need to be telling oh, everybody that, else. That when when can that go wrong? <laughs> That's that's right before you wipe out. Usually you're doing. Oh look how good I'm skiing. Look how good I'm. And then boom, it's when you hit a tree. <laughs> yeah, so that's what exactly. happens to me. Humility waits around every corner. But you're right, a little bit too much. I do love it though because you got to hype it. You got to get excited about it. But that can create blind spots. The the we're too awesome. That's very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think hmm. we are awesome, and we need to keep <laughs> saying that. But we need to be telling other people that, just not ourselves, right? Is there an appetite? Are people curious about it from other markets? And, you know, I'm seeing some of my listenership. It's funny because I've really gone all in on the podcast for economic transformation in, you know, Calgary, Alberta, Western Canada. I'm seeing some increase in listenership from Ontario. Like we're watching it. It was, we're primarily an Alberta listenership and Alberta focus. I'm starting to see, and which I'm like, oh, is this an opportunity? Do I need to, is there a curiosity in some of these other markets going, hey, I'm seeing the, the financial data and Western Canada or Alberta's maybe, maybe that's worth getting on my radar. Are you running into that? Well, for sure, Tyler, we, we're yeah. seeing uh, venture companies start to pay attention. I used to kid and say that when you were a, a venture firm in, um, in Toronto, you'd get on your plane and you'd fly over, over. Calgary. I think you said that last time we chatted, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. And now they're actually going, huh, I should probably stop in Calgary and see what's going on. We get, um, I get text messages from Toronto um, venture capitalists all the time saying, hey, what's going on there? I'm thinking of putting a person on the ground there. Do you know anybody that can join me? So we're seeing new firms Oh, come so in. Not, not just stopping in, but actually let's, put, some, let's yeah, put a presence staying. there. Yeah, I love exactly. That. So that's bringing in a whole new fresh. Well, I've had a few, and we probably, again, it's probably similar conversation. A couple of friends that were from Ontario moved here, fell in love with the province, built businesses here. But when they went to do their rounds, and these are more mature businesses, they couldn't get, even get a phone call back here, but they called up their network in Ontario and boom, they raised 20 million. Yeah, it and is. I was like, hmm, that still sounds broken to me when that person didn't even hesitate and they couldn't get a phone call back. And that was maybe a year and a half ago, Yeah, which is not that long ago, but I, you know, that, I didn't like that story. <laughs> yeah, well, you need, you need to send those people to me. So yes, I, told, I will. Absolutely. So have you talked um, to Sandy? <laughs> but not, not that we can have, not, it's not necessarily about the money, but it's about how to get the money. Well, no, um, let's bring some more money into this ecosystem. Absolutely. Let's yeah. Save. This is where there's some like, uh, but also the, 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 the thing I didn't love about that was that they had to go outside, which was great because it's bringing some new investors here. And I actually got them on the show and I got an introduction. They said, Hey, Aunt Alberta's on our radar as that next place where those big opportunities are going to oh, exist. It's not yeah. as saturated. It's not as competitive. There's a little bit more collaboration on the investor in the investor in the investor groups here. We want to get involved, and that was somebody from downtown Toronto. So that yeah. that left me very optimistic from a view from outside the bottle. 
True. Mm. It's a little bit of a um, double-edged sword though, Tyler. We, you know, mm. <laughs> bringing outside <laughs> money and say it, say it, come on, lay it out there. Yeah, lay just it out saying, there. but no, yeah, yeah. we need it and we want it. Um, but yeah. it's funny when you kind of say, well, we're like the, the, kind of the best cast kept secret here and then we go well we shouldn't be the best kept secret so oh yeah there is the sword always is multiple i think it's more than two sides the sword has like it's four or five sides are you still are you seeing is there more competition for good deals now now that things are a little bit more reasonably approached or looked at or evaluated just call a spade a spade uh i i don't see real competition tyler i see okay. a lot of collaboration mm. i mean there isn't any um th- there's would be very few anyway um uh, venture capitalists here in Alberta, or even you know high net worth individuals that would want to do a deal by themselves. So deal flow and collaboration and yeah, sharing is really important. And I've heard that, and I've heard you know, and depending, I think, and this is my ignorance. Also, the stage you're at, you're at an earlier stage versus you're at a Series A moving to Series B. You're a lot more of a quote unquote, I don't want to say sure thing, but that money wants all the deal because they know that it's a different stage of the journey. It's usually bigger dollars, but there's maybe less risk. If I can say even that, yeah, you know, risk is this everywhere. <laughs> I mean, you know, managing your portfolio uh, as a venture capitalist usually doesn't mean you're the only person in a deal. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you um, get to your point, you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. 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 You just and, hey, we'll, 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 you be, we'll be that, lead we, on the, yeah. You can't allocate that much money. Right. So um, I think, you know, you'll see, even at the Series A level, there's going to be three or four institutions probably in that deal in a lot of cases, minimum two for sure. Um, so that, that's generally how it happens. So collaboration is good, but but in more mature markets, people want to grab it and go to only the people that they know, right? So they're only doing deals that they know, which is a little bit different. Um, so we, we, we aren't very competitive. I think we're very much more collaborative here in this market. Okay. What what are your thoughts on, you just made me think about something, some of the larger institutions that are spinning up these smaller partnership style funds where they want to get involved in that space. How's that? Have, are you seeing impact on how all of a sudden you've got institutional money that typically plays higher and higher and or farther down the road and safer trying to then, it's like a big company trying to spin up the skunk works or be innovative or get involved. How's that impacting? And are, are we going to, are we seeing more of that? And is it having a positive impact? Or does it just so it, make for good head, good good headlines? <laughs> yeah, I think for for one one thing, Tyler, is we are seeing more activity in corporate venture capital, which mm. means like Deloitte Ventures and okay. ATB Ventures and even Synovus and oh. organizations like that. So we the, we would say that the corporate venture capital corporate is venture capital. really looking for um, technologies that perhaps can help them in their traditional business. Um, but you know, is that, is that an avatar style approach where you're getting companies like we want to invest? We know that maybe the good ideas are going to come from outside of our ecosystem. How do we play in a space that through governance size and just scale, they're not that good at. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I'm excited about Deloitte, for example, Deloitte ventures, you know, they're starting to get pretty active. Um, you know, they've got some corporate capital, so it's like their own money, right? They're not raising money from other limited partners. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting thing. The problem with corporate venture capital for an entrepreneur is you don't want to get, you know, your only one customer. <laughs> so you got to make sure yeah. that the corporate venture, you, just because you got invested by Deloitte and your product is for accounting, that you can't go somewhere else, right? So that's one issue with corporate venture capital. Yeah, who who, who, owns, about, who owns what and what are they are they yeah, trying to yeah. yeah yeah what what what's the ultimate goal and read the fine print yeah <laughs> I'm so I'm say. I'm I think that that's good um, you know I think that uh, we're seeing more activity maybe out of uh, organizations like Scotiabank, Roynat, some yeah. of the FIs are doing some unique and more creative venture debt vehicles that could be supported with a bit of equity so. You know, it's a mix of capital. It's just, you don't have to give away equity all the time to grow your business. At different stages, you can attract different types of capital. I had a, I had a founder, I had an investor actually in early stage investor said, Hey, listen, if you can, if you can grow your business without and to a reasonable rate without taking my money, you probably shouldn't. I just really appreciated the honesty in that statement. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, it's so true. There's nothing wrong with bootstrapping uh, <laughs> unless you need rocket fuel to get ahead of the game. But the many, why is so many uh, founders would probably tell you that they took capital too early. They burned it. 
without learning much because they had it. Uh, and so I, I caution people all the time. Um, I say two things. One is how much are you raising half a million dollars? And I go, oh, that probably doesn't sound like enough. Um, but secondly, what are you going to do with it? And uh, if you don't have a clear path to deploy that capital to increase the value of your company, you shouldn't be taking it. Yeah. Cause you're going to end up farther down the road with less yeah. for it potentially. Yeah. As the old joke, you're often defined more by what you say no to, not what you say yes to. <laughs> Saying yes yeah. is easy. <laughs> Uh, I really, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, roadblocks, uh, you kind of skirted around it a little bit. Um, I'm always, I always want to be careful with this one. Um, government versus private sector in Alberta, you know, you, so many initiatives, do they work? Do they not? Do they have positive impact? Anything you can see around that relationship? I'm really putting you on the spot here with this one. <laughs> the, where we see things happening at a provincial and a government level versus the private sector and the balance there of you know initiatives you're seeing be effective or is it more about getting out of the way and removing the red tape that's holding people back from being effective? Any thoughts or comments there? Yeah, well, I mean, Tyler, um, you know, when there's political uncertainty, it doesn't help anyone. Yeah, and me. and investors tend to stay away from political uncertainty. Um, so the rhetoric and the you know name calling and what we're watching <laughs> today in politics is not helpful for sure. Um, so that's my message there. Um, but secondly, you know sometimes you just have to not pay attention to it and just build your damn business. <laughs> and uh, you know you can Beware get the caught up in the noise. The you can get caught up in the well, why aren't we doing this and what's going on here? But, you know, if you just put your head down and try and build your business, that can be very helpful too. Now, policies that uh, can affect whether an investor will bring money into Canada or into Alberta are things that um, that the citizens of, of Canada and Alberta should be worried about um, and and vote at the um, polling station. Uh, to voice that's that's where you get them. to have a voice. That's where yeah, you're probably exactly. the, one of the only place you actually get to potentially create change. <laughs> exactly. And that only happens once every few years. So it's not on um, social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that we, we have to be, uh, you know, our brand is very important. Our, our um, federal brand of Canada and the provincial brand of Alberta, and we have to do everything we can not to tarnish those brands. And uh, so I think that the government, both the federal and the provincial government have, um, put a lot of money into the ecosystem, which I think has been um, providing return to, um, to uh, in the impact that it's making. Uh, you know, you have to say Prairies Can, which is the federal um, group is supporting. Totally. Derek, I was, I was going to give him a shout out if you didn't. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're supporting the ecosystem and they're also yeah. directly supporting entrepreneurs. And, and I think that that is money well spent um, you know, the, the provincial government as well, Alberta Innovates, works very hard. They took a whole group of uh, founders down to the valley. Those sorts of things are very, very helpful for our ecosystem, and we're, we're fortunate to have them. There's, you know, other jurisdictions in the world that don't have any of that support, for sure. Hmm, right. You know, I'll vote one more time on the Alberta Investor Tax Credit, um, if we could just see that once again, Minister Glubish. And, uh, but, um, you know, I think I could put a pretty good case of why that was a good uh, tool and is a good tool for the provinces that we, um, sit beside. So BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Incentivize the right, the right behavior. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think there's perhaps some policy that would help there, but, um, listen, we just need to put our heads down, build great businesses and, uh, prove the model out. And, and that's where we're going to see success. We can't just say, oh, I can't do it because the government won't do this. Like, just do it. Uh. I think a good old head down, ass up, hard work strategy is uh, is, is underrated. <laughs> sometimes. Exactly. Hey, curious. I want to talk about deal point for a few minutes here at the end, and I've got a. Uh, you and I were joking. I've got. I found an amazing photo of you holding a giant, looked like a debit card, um, which which I love. I, I think as a kid, I always aspired to hold a giant check for some reason. I don't know why. I think as Vince McMahon delivering the the sweepstakes or whatever it was. If I'm dating myself there, but you, this is weird pointed question potentially. So. 11 years, nine months, court on LinkedIn, have you been involved in DealPoint, DealPoint as the founder and CEO? But yet, and this is maybe my own filter, you're still out there participating in an environment where you would win an award, where prize of a digital commerce, like, oh, a company's been around for 12 years, they're just doing their thing, they're maybe not out in the ecosystem, they're maybe not involved in pitching events. 
talk to me a little bit about the balance of that because that creates a little dichotomy in my mind, which could be completely made up in my own head, but I just thought I would ask you about it. Well, that's, that's fair, Tyler. So, you know, speaking of the 10 year overnight success, but, um, <laughs> you know, so, Touché, so yeah. we have, our team has never really been one that we've not participated in, in an accelerator. We haven't done pitch competitions. Like we just, that's just not our shtick. We've never done yep. that because we've been quietly figuring out how to build the best product for the private capital markets. And when this opportunity came up, the team said, you know, I think we should go for this one. And and I was a little hesitant, actually, because okay. I'm, I'm never <clears throat> one to really put it out there. But it was crazy. I mean, Tyler, like, you know me pretty well, but it was a very emotional win for us. Like, That's I awesome. just was, I, love it. I was literally shocked. I just, and you know, I think it was really um, the validation that we got for the product that we have built was overwhelming to me. And, uh, and, mm. and I'm very excited about that. And I'm very bullish on the future of winning that award from <clears throat> DC bank really uh, is important for the team and what we can do. So right now, because I, you know, never stop selling, I'm, uh, we need to add people to our team. So I'm looking for very experienced leaders that have taken a B two B SaaS product to market. We need to build the team around this. It's ready. Um, we've got great traction, but we need a team. And uh, and I've never personally taken a B two B SaaS product to market. I'm not the one to do it. So I'm really looking for really um, passionate uh, entrepreneurs that uh, want to help. And um, we've got the ability to do that. Speaking of bootstrapping. Um, you have a little bit more equity that you can put on the table as you're recruiting people. So that's good. And empl an employer brand, it's a competitive world. And I believe that the perfect hire is a balanced relationship. They're as interested in you as you are in them and vice yeah. versa. Like it isn't like, oh, I will give you a job or you'll take the job. No, no, no. That's not how you get the best people right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a high value exchange <laughs> of opportunities. Yeah. So I'm very thank grateful you. Thank to, you know, Jeff yeah. Smith and the DC Bank uh, team, you know, they um, they have stepped up in a big way to make fintech uh, important in this uh, city. Um, so it's it's been great. And the relationship that we'll have with them go forward is also um, very exciting. So I appreciate it. Tenny, you felt a bit vulnerable telling that story. I loved it. Thank you for being honest about it. And it's so easy to kind of be head down, ass up and go, is this the right thing for us to participate? No, we're just going to get back to doing the work. But there is those right times and those right initiatives because they create optics and they push your brand and they get you on people's radar yeah. and knowing when to take the time because they can suck up all your time or you can use them very strategically, which sounds like what you what you did. So thanks for being honest about that. I think as founders are like, oh, who has time? I'm so busy doing all the, like doing the thing. I don't have time to go do this event, but it can be really like the, the earned, the paid own and earned side of the media world I live in, that kind of earned recognition. It, yeah, it, it's sure. almost priceless. You can actually put a dollar on it, yeah, but exactly. it is literally priceless in a lot of ways. So thanks for sharing yeah. that in that way. Mm -hmm. You bet. Um, Sandy, so good to chat with you. Thanks for making the time to come on. Um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, I obviously go check out Intergen, can check out DealPoint. Uh, is it LinkedIn? Do you have a preferred, do you have a smoke signals, carrier pigeons? Do you have a preferred way for people to get a hold of you? Yeah, LinkedIn is really um, awesome. Nice. I'm, I'm, you can find me there. I don't carry a business card, but I do, um, respond to, um, people on uh, LinkedIn as long as they're not trying to sell me something I don't need. <laughs> you mean the first thing they do is go, Hey, do you want to attend my event or buy my exactly. product? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That never works. People it never works. Stop doing it. <laughs> and I will tell you that I do have a very, quite a large pending network, uh, invitation list, but because I haven't been able to go through it, but uh, oh, that is so time-consuming. I, I mean, fall behind you, that on a regular basis. <laughs> if you tell tell uh, me that you need some help or that you have something that uh, you want to chat about, I'll help direct you to the right people for sure. Amazing, Sandy. Thank you so much for your time, and thanks for the, just thanks for being who you are in the community. And I look forward to running into you at an event probably later today or tomorrow. Well, I always <laughs> say this, Tyler. Thank you for doing what you do because we just spoke about the fact that we need to talk about what we're doing, <laughs> and through you know venues like you and your podcast, uh, the word gets out. So thanks for taking the time to do this because we all are busy and um, this is a great initiative that you started. What, two years ago? How long ago now? Oh, we'll be episode 400 in January. I oh started this gosh. at the beginning of the, I know. I, I'm like, what? How, how did this, this was a thing off the corner of my desk and all of a sudden COVID happened and everyone was available. Oh my I, God. I think during COVID I was recording five or six episodes. I met more people during the first year of COVID than I met Seriously? five years prior. <laughs> I did. It's like, it's like dating on steroids. Do you make the dating <laughs> analogy? 
It's like, oh my God. And like literally episode 400. So I'm going to take it to 500 just because it's a great number and then I'll maybe reassess. But I net people like, oh, how do you find people? There's so many cool people to talk to. Yeah, and there's so I many agree. things. And the more you peel back, the more you turn over the stone, you're like, oh, there's three people I can talk to there. And exactly. it becomes, a, and because people are so willing to engage with you, I yeah. just think it's, it's been such a cool opportunity. Thank you for saying that. But I would literally do it if no one listened because I get to meet cool people like you. <laughs> exactly. You know, Tyler, I, I host this Wine Wednesday fireside chat that we do quarterly now at Intergen. And it's one of my oh, favorite that. things to do, which is to sit down with somebody who's interesting. Uh, next month, I have Jeff McKaig, actually, Trimac. Okay, nice. And, um, you know, it's just really fun having a conversation, uh, quiet conversation on stage. I always say that is really, um, you know, it's not a panel. It's just, it's just really fun having the conversation. So I'm well, sure it, you love what you do because uh, I can see it in you. It's the lost art of just a good old fashioned chat. We kind of know where it's going to go, art. but nothing's offside. We might agree. We might not agree. It's all okay. Cause we're just having a conversation Exactly. in the world of sound bites at 140 characters. We've lost the ability to just like, cause sometimes you get to the most interesting bits 20 minutes in, you got to spend the time to get there. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> Oh, sure. I love the fireside and I do love the fireside chat model because you like, you know, the best compliment I guess people like, it was like I was eavesdropping on two friends talking. I'm like, okay, yeah, then we yeah. nailed it. Then we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Danny, thanks. Thanks so much. And uh, I look forward to crossing paths with you. Again. Right on. Thanks for having me, Tyler. <laughs>